CataractCoach.com. Complete cataract case, phaco chop, and a large myopic eye. We've got a lot of good pointers here in this case, which we'll show you from start to finish. There's the paracentesis. Look how big the eye is compared to the fixation ring. That cornea has a 13 millimeter diameter. There's anesthetic being placed in the anterior chamber and the rest of it on the cornea. Now we'll get our dispersive viscoelastic and fill the anterior chamber. And look how much viscoelastic we need. That's a very large anterior chamber. We'll make our incision again. Compare the cornea to the fixation ring. That's a big cornea. We'll use our diamond here to create a temporal incision. We're making that on the steep meridian to help the patient's astigmatic result. And now for the capsorexis. Very important to use the marks on your forceps tips in order to create an accurate capsorexis. Remember, all of our IOLs have an optic of six millimeters in diameter. So we want to create a five or five and a half millimeter capsorexis, even in an eye like this that's quite large. Don't make an overly huge capsorexis because that may not overlap the optic. So that looks just about perfect. And notice how we've centered it on the Purkinje images. And we can measure it. It's just about five to five and a half. Beautiful. Notice the eyelash is all draped out of the way. That's important too. Bounce salt solution for a hydro dissection. There's a good fluid wave. We try the other direction. Tap the nucleus, see if we can rotate it. That looks pretty good. Now this patient's not a mega myope. The eye will power is about nine diopters. Axial length is somewhere on the 28 millimeter range. So we're going to put our phaco probe in the eye. There's the chopper buzzing to the nucleus. Let's split this into two halves and taking our time to really fully separate those halves. We'll bring up each half one by one into the iris plane where we can easily emulsify it. And that looks great. Notice how we're just using the chopper to keep the lens pieces right in front of the tip. That looks beautiful. Second half comes up, chop it again, and we can emulsify. Now, very careful here. When the last pieces come up, look what the chopper's doing, protecting the posterior capsule. In an eye that's very myopic, a broken posterior capsule can mean a much higher risk of a retinal detachment. We want to avoid that. So that looks good. Nucleus is out. We didn't let the anterior chamber collapse either. Switch over to the IA probe. And we'll clean this up quite nicely. So cortex removal. Now, sometimes you will get a reverse pupillary block in these ultramyopic eyes. And you can, of course, fix that by temporarily tenting up the iris. In this case, we haven't really had much issue. So that's good. So cleaning up the capsular bag. Little capsular polishing here on the undersurface of that anterior capsular rim. Really getting it nice and clean here. Now, it's a lot easier to work within a, a myopic eye, which is very large, compared to a hyperopic eye, which is very tiny. So you see we had a lot of easy access to the whole nucleus. There's the capsule bag beautifully filled up with the viscoelastic, and now we're going to deliver our IOL. Here comes a single piece of acrylic lens going right in the capsule bag. That looks great. And we'll get this centered up and make sure the haptics unfold. So you can see this IOL looks pretty small in this big eye, but of course it's a normal size lens. Um, in this case, we've got the lens rotated and we'll line it up. And you can see there's the overlap of the optic by the capsorex, which looks great. Going behind the lens, remove viscoelastic. We're gonna finish this case up pretty quickly. So yeah, unedited case here, about five minutes or so. But more importantly, very safe, very efficient, and very precise for this patient. Here at the end, you can see that optic does look tiny compared to that 13 millimeter cornea. Hydrating up and sealing the incisions. We're gonna do one more sweep here to make sure there's no retained viscoelastic. These ultramyopic eyes or these even mildly myopic eyes are more likely to have these IOP spikes. So let's make sure we get all the viscoelastic out of the eye. A little triamcinolone going in the eye at the end of the case. That's gonna be helpful for the patient. And we also put in a little bit here of moxifloxacin to prevent endophthalmitis. Everything looks great. Wex cell sponges on the incisions. Let's check. Everything's sealed up. Hey, beautiful case. And the next day, a very happy patient. Thanks for watching.